our whole lives. We've been taught to fear them. The shark attack. Multiple attacks. Bitten by a shark. There's a rogue shark out there. The Jaws mentality, right? Shark attack. Bitten by a shark. But what if we've been taught wrong? My first time swimming with a tiger shark was on the Gold Coast, and she was literally taking her last breaths in front of us. For 83 years and counting, we've been running the world's longest marine cull. It is just off our coastline, but it's so hidden from the public. You're afraid, naturally, of something that you don't know. They're actually the real victims and the ones that have something to fear. Its, it's intention is to kill sharks, to cull them. It is absolutely archaic that we're relying on a program that was devised in 1930. Well, I hope to think every Australian can think like this. It's not a solution by any means. They're just killing sharks. People are unaware that this device is a, is a fishing device. We're killing in the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. I think once people realise what's happening, how senseless the killing actually is, I think they should be outraged about what is happening to Australia's beautiful natural resources. We're the government and we are keeping you safe from this big scary thing. They have no education in, no background in, and don't know what they're doing. It is in effect a gag order, and it's near impossible to get any footage underwater. No, mate, and I want that the camera. Safety of the operation and, uh, I want that potential camera. Jeopardy that you put. What if our ignorance is about to wipe them out? There's a good chance this documentary may actually start its own feeding frenzy. Andre Burrell, director of the wonderful new film Envoy Shark Cull. Um, welcome to screen watching, mate. Tell us, what indication does the title give us, the viewer, into what you hope the film will achieve? Why is it called Envoy? Envoy for me is a bit of a, first, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, Envoy for me is a bit of, a, 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 I guess it's, it's named for all the amazing cast that you see in the film um, who are uh, representatives for this issue and for sharks and for the environment and, and all these things that can't speak for themselves. So um, yeah, an Envoy is a, is a messenger or a diplomatic representative. Um, and, and I felt, I felt that's a good way to sum up what these these people that are in our film uh, do and are. So um, yeah, the, the 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 word just spoke to me for this, uh, and and um, it's a bit of a bit of a credit to them, I guess, a bit of an homage to them for for the amazing work they do. Um, we're only relatively new to this space; we're just filmmakers coming in and and um, you know exposing an issue. Uh, people have been working on this for a very very long time before that, and I felt um, I felt putting them at the forefront. Um, was was uh yeah so it's a, a nice thing to do when did you decide to make this your fight what's your history in in conservation and um and 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 what's happening to the the shark population around the world look i'm fa fairly new to this space and i've been kind of a i guess a slow burn getting involved would be one way to put it um so i first started scuba diving about seven eight years ago uh, and that's when things started to change for me in terms of being much more aware of this whole other world that exists down there that, that most people aren't, aren't aware of other than maybe seeing, seeing some of it on their dinner plate or on a documentary or something like that. Yeah. Uh, so um, that, that really opened my eyes just to, just to this, this is, yeah, like I said, this whole other world down there. Um, and then slowly you just become more attuned to issues and what's going on in that space. And, you know, it, it might be plastic pollution you hear about, or it might be shark finning you hear about. One issue that spoke to me because I was so, you know, embarrassed and, and, and angry that I didn't know about it um, was this shark culling that happens on the east coast of Australia and has happened for, for, for 83 years. So um, I, I grew up in Brisbane. I went to either the Gold or the Sunshine Coast pretty much every school holidays. Uh, and you have this vague notion that there's shark nets out there and they keep you safe. At least that's what you're told. Um, and it wasn't until I was well into my 20s and become a scuba diver and actually dug a little deeper to find out what, what these shark nets they talk about actually are. 
Um, and, and I was mind blown when I found out what it, what it is. So I just, I just wanted to share that. Um, I wanted to share that with, with the world. It didn't happen all at once. It didn't happen immediately. Mm. Um, but this kind of anger and frustration and stuff about this program, um, this culling program, it just wouldn't go away. It just, just kept coming back. And, and I think, you know, when you've got an idea that you just got to tackle um, when that happens. Well, you, that's, that's a really interesting point. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, a paddy registered diver as well, but I grew up watching Jaws. I bought into the demonization of sharks, but I, but I just as quickly, I guess, parted ways with that misconception with education, which seems to be the point of the film, I'd say. You, you're providing this fresher, newer, more scientific perspective on, on the shark's existence and on the, the, the color, on, on, on the, the culling and the, the net and the, um, the drum line. Yeah, I mean, the best thing you can do is, is grab someone by the scruff of the neck and take them underwater. You know what I mean? That's the yeah. best way to get people to understand that, that um, that's a pretty cool world down there. And also sharks are not what you're told. Yeah. They're not swimming around. They can't smell a drop of blood in a swimming pool. They're not going to come eat the lower half of your torso off just because they've got malice running through their veins. Like yeah. this, That's the best way to do it. Um, the second best way to do it, I think, is film. Uh, and and I, hope, I hope we've done that. I hope we, we uh, you know, we, we share the beauty of the ocean through some amazing uh, underwater cinematography um, yeah, from some of the best underwater cinematographers in the world. Uh, and then we also, it, it takes a turn, it goes down kind of an investigative uh, journalism path where we, where we look at what this program is that we're told keeps us safe. Uh, and we poke and we prod and we pull at some threads and, and we see what happens. So, um, yeah, I, I think we do both. I, I think, I hope we make people fall in love with the ocean. I hope we make people question the Jaws and the Hollywood um, and, and maybe some, some, some parts of the media that are a bit fear-mongering. I hope we make people question that narrative. Uh, and then I, I hope we also educate people as to what these, these programs are that we're told keep us safe at our beaches. Just as cinematic imagery taught us incorrectly, clearly, that sharks are these, as you say, malice-filled killing machines. So now your images show us their beauty and intelligence, but also disturbingly their suffering and the, and the bycatch suffering as well. It's not easy to watch, Andre. Is it, was there a, a line you had to draw or were you, were you just all in on some of that footage? There's, there's scenes that are, that are difficult. We, 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 there's, there's more of that footage sitting on a hard drive that's not in the film because it would get too much. Like, oh, I feel like we've kind of, you know, sat on that seesaw and tried to get that balance right on enough to make people go, like, jaw on the ground, like, oh, my God, this is happening off the beaches that, you know, this is happening off Bondi Beach or this is happening off Surface Paradise. Sure. Oh, I think we have enough to have that reaction, but not too much to where we just break the audience if that's one way to put it yeah. um so yeah that there's more and it's it's it, some of it's really hard to watch in, in total it's maybe five minutes of a 90 minute film but it, it feels longer yeah um, so yeah yeah it's it's it, it was a balance showing the beauty but also showing the reality and, and i think sometimes you just got to show the the ugly truth and and she is ugly um we live in an age when fear mongering as a means to a political end is is pretty standard practice that the response of the Queensland government that you capture in the film shows that um, to play the devil's advocate are you pushing a rock uphill in this day and age by stating just listen to science yeah a, a little bit uh, absolutely but um, I think Western Australia tried culling in 2014 and it was abandoned within three months because of public outcry and public outrage and um, the reason that happened is because that cull was so visible. It was new. It was novel. It was on the news. People got, got their backs up about it and it stopped. And, and I'm hoping, yes, of course, this is a huge, huge battle. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. But I feel like any, if anything's going to do it, it's going to be this. And, and that's because hopefully, you know, this, this brings the visibility that the WA cull had. With that visibility comes outrage and with outrage generally comes change. So, so for me, for a cull that's been running since 1937 in New South Wales and barely anyone knows about, and 1962 in Queensland, um, the ingredients that, that's missing from the WA formula for success is, is visibility. So I just really hope we can bring that. And, and a lot of decisions were made in the film with the artwork and with, with you know, 
um, our narrator, our fantastic narrator, a lot of decisions were made to get that visibility to, to the average Joe. It's a horrible question to have to ask, but in light of the documentary, I've got to say, what will come first? The removal of nets and drum lines and an overall shift in society's abuse of sharks or their extinction? That is a, that is a, very, that is a very good question. Um, for some species, uh, have I still got you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Sorry, just, just cut out for a second there. Sure. Sorry. Um, I'll just start that question again. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that we're right on the we're right on the precipice of which way it could go. There is some species of sharks in Australia right now that are right on the on the precipice of, of, of extinction. They are classed as critically endangered, and the next step on that ranking is extinct. So, um, if we don't act soon and we don't do something soon, we absolutely will lose species of sharks before we stop this practice and other harmful practices um, but this this practice in particular is for no reason um, so yeah look which one will come first extinction or or or, or end these programs i really hope it's it's ending these programs i, I really think it can happen um, if, if if this film gets traction and people take that passion that they feel and that anger that they feel when they're watching it and channel it. Mm. I think I think we can end it before before it's too late for some species. Um, but we're playing with a stubborn, uh, slow moving government that, that makes the rules. So yeah, it's just impossible to say. So who do we have to get in? Who do we have to get this film in, in front of to make a difference? What what course of action does the film need to inspire? Look, I I think I think anyone that goes to the beach in Australia should see this film. That it's, it's, it's that simple. If you, if you go to the ocean, you like the ocean, um, you're interested in the ocean, you should see this film because what you'll see will um, blow your mind. You, you won't believe what a supposedly developed country is doing to its, to its, uh, to its ocean and to its, um, to its wildlife. Yeah. So everyone needs to see it, especially I think surfers. Surfers are the highest risk category for shark bite. You know, when you look at all the statistics over the last few years, it's, it's surfers that are, that are at, mo at most risk. Um, and they have a really important voice in this in this debate, you know yeah. what I mean? As the highest risk category and such avid ocean users, they, they have a strong voice. And it's really great to see that community is, is largely against culling and killing because they understand it doesn't work. Um, and Lane Beachley and Tom Carroll, nine world championships between them uh, are in our film and they share that, they share that opinion. Um, so yeah, any, anyone that touches saltwater in Australia should, should go see this film because uh, it will surprise you and, and we need your voice to uh, stand up against uh, what, is a, what is a pretty archaic program. People can sign the petition at uh, envoyfilm.com.au. Did I get that right? Yeah, correct. So we have, uh, we have three calls to action. One of them is a petition, uh, which you can sign. One of them is to attend protests and paddle outs, which we're going to facilitate after the film's release. Uh, and the and the other one is to uh, just basically t tell your friends and family, get as many people as you know to watch the film because that spreads awareness. Uh, so all those three calls to action are uh, envoyfilm.com.au forward slash act now. Um, and in terms of the screenings, uh, all the screenings that are, that are happening for our cinema release are at watch.envoyfilm.com.au. Wonderful, mate. More power to you. You're we're on board here at Screen Watching and. Um we'll, we'll uh, fight the good fight to, to help get rid of these awful nets and the, the attitudes of um, society as it stands now. Andre Burrell, thank you so much for being here on Screen Watch. It's been great talking to you. Yeah, really enjoyed it. It was a good chat. Thank you. Great questions. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, check it out. Hope you enjoy. Thank you, mate. Bye-bye. Cool.